I go, went ahead and signed and denied certification, writing on the forum, quote, certification denied, Linda Brickman, MC, Maricopa County Chairman, unquote. We then began the second <laughs> LNA test, but this one was conducted by Maricopa County election staff and on separate Dominion voting tabulation machines. This was a similar process with results going to the server and reports were then again printed out. But for whatever problems or irregularities that surfaced during the first SOS test, they did not manifest this time. And then for the same reasons noted above, I denied certification, writing on the Maricopa County Forum, quote, certification denied, Linda Brickman, MC Maricopa County Chairman, unquote. I also have copies of all the ballots counted with copies available upon request later. Again, my reasons, as noted, were above my first hand ob observations of the flaws and irregularities in the SOS LNA tabulating and calculating of the Dominion software. The unexplained turning off the computer system and doing a reset versus a correction and the over five hours for the SOS test and results review. Plus my lack of faith in the second LNA test, we could see the machines, but we could not see or observe the software behind the machine to confirm what had really gone on. As a veteran county elections worker who actually worked the election both during the August primary and the general from 10, 1920 to 11, 11, 20, working on signature verification room, the duplication room, adjudication room, ABC room, and the hand count audit. Let me share at least six irregularities that I personally observed. Number one, Signature verification standards were constantly being lowered by supervisors in order to move more quickly and process the higher amount of early and mail-in ballots from approximately 15 points of similarities where you see the, a rounded L or a straight line, a number of different similarities that we were told there may be an hour process of training prior to all this beginning. From the 15 points of similarities, reduced to a minimum of three, lowered to one, and ultimately none. Just pass each signature verification through, we were told. Too many rejections have already been turned in and reviewed. We need to move more quickly. This is not the way an election should be run. Where's the integrity? Two. Alleged signatures and challenged signatures on envelopes where the signature was completely different from the person and the name as a listed voter. <coughs> These were let through and approved by supervisors. So the ones who signed the envelopes were not the actual voter, but these were allowed to go through with Maricopa County verified stamped on the outside of each affidavit envelope. Three, challenged runs or batches of envelopes for signatures, verification observed by me to be the exact same handwriting on the affidavit syndrome envelopes. And these were on various ballots. I saved what was the ballot number, and I believe I've turned it in. If not, I do have that information where there were at least 30 ballots that I saw at one time that were all signed by the same handwriting, but on different voters' names. When I asked the county attorney if the, when I asked if the county attorney would be alerted for possible fraud, I was told no, but supervisors would take care of it. In the dupes room, Number four, and this is the duplicate, excuse me, the duplication room. I observed with my Democratic partner the preparation of a new ballot since the original one was soiled 
or wouldn't go through the tabulators. I read her a Trump Republican ballot, and as soon as she entered it into the system, the ballot def defaulted on the screen to a Biden Democratic ballot. Just what I asked. We reported this to the supervisors, and others in the room commented that they had witnessed the same manipulation. We were never told what, if any corrective action, was taken. All I know is the next day I was called outside the room that I was working in signature verification by the supervisor saying, I understand you caused some problems this week and saying that you thought our machines were not working correctly. And I was being the one that was scolded. And I was told at that point in time, I could not discuss anything or talk about what was going on as many people were threatened because they were told that there were, their voices would be suppressed they would be either left, have to leave the room and not work there again. I'm here because I think this is our duty to speak the truth and tell the truth. <laughs> Number five, election office observers. When it became apparent that more and more early and mail-in ballots need to be processed I mentioned that the current role of the number of obser observers per party was not adequate. One per party unless all parties agreed to more. And since the governor refused to call the legislature into session for whatever his reasons, and little incentive for the Democrats to agree to a higher adequate number, there was no way that one observer per party who were forced to a, the back of the room or to have to watch behind a closed in wall or a see-through wall would have legitimate opportunity to see what election workers were actually seeing in real time and doing especially where up to 20 or more workers processing tests, sometimes in 10 seconds or less. And I personally observed most observers acting clueless and do not, did not believe any of them even recognized the challenges that I was referencing above. Number six, one of the most egregious. In both the duplication and adjudication rooms, which I worked, I observed the problem of Trump votes with voters, checking the bubble for a vote for Trump, but also writing in the name Donald Trump under the write-in candidate and checking the bubble next to his handwritten name again as a duplicated vote. And this would continue on as an overvote, which means no vote was counted at all, despite the policy having been changed to allow these overvotes. Supervisors contradicted their own policies where the intent was clear. Ray Valenzuela, Director of Elections, told me openly the morning of the Dominion certification, November 18th, 2020, that this was incorrect. The supervisors were terribly mistaken, and as an adjudicator, I was instructed incorrectly that these many votes should have been counted and not turned away as an overvote. Chairman Fincham, legislators, mayor, I am here today, again, not as a, an expert in the Dominion software, but I'm here as a voter in Maricopa County who wants to hear and speak the truth, even though myself and many others have been suppressed to speak before you now. There should be integrity in our voting and our voting electorate. Voting is not a right. Voting is not a privilege. Voting is not an option. Voting is an obligation for every legal American citizen. Thank you.